Hey gang, welcome back. This is our Motivation Monday. And uh, Brian Schwartz, you got to meet him last time. Most of you know uh, who I am, or you, you think you do, so I'm, I'm not going to give you all of that on one of these broadcasts, because we want to get into the real purpose for which we are spending time together here while we're still quarantined. Um, we've been quarantined for quite a while oh, because yeah. it started, remember, we were yeah. at Purim, the Feast of Purim, mm -hmm. the Feast of Esther, you know, Esther and Mordecai and Haman and all those dudes. This was, uh, was it February? End of February 2020? Yes, mm -hmm. it's time is kind of I know, all come to... I know, it gets it We gets got better. back, didn't we get back in the middle of March? I don't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. Good. Somewhere in there. I feel better about my memory since you can't. But I'm... we were coming back right when the, the, the swell of anxiety and fear oh, yeah. was hitting the globe. They shut down Auschwitz. The, the, the whole doors thing. were shutting yes. as we went west. The yeah. doors were closing. Because we were fixing to go over. We were going to Israel, too. Yeah. And we knew we weren't able to enter there. So it was, it, it was, it was fascinating to uh -huh. see the timing yeah. as we were over there. Yeah. So you talk about intense... So here is this feast. It's not one of the major seven major feasts of Israel. This was the uh, the feast of Purim, the feast of Esther, and so Pastor Stovall, where we serve here in Jacksonville, Florida, Celebration Church, he decides, hey, let's let's. <laughs> he preaches himself for us all the time. Hey, let's. I got a great idea. <laughs> Okay, let's celebrate Purim or Purim or whatever he says. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a Cajun Gentile, so his, <laughs> his Hebrew is a work in progress, right? So we have you. Yeah, but he's 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 good. He's trying. Yeah, he's absolutely. Trying. So I love that. And he says, "Hey, let's let's celebrate Purim or Feast of Esther at Auschwitz." <laughs> I'm thinking at Auschwitz. Let yeah. me think about this for a second. Yeah. So. You've got this bad dude who wants to wipe out mm. the entire Jewish population um, all those years back. Okay, that's parallel with the Holocaust for sure. Mm -hmm. And then I started to see all the connections. I said, yeah. okay, we're in. So we took 70, 60 to 70 yeah. pastors and wives from 14 nations. And we all converged at that hell hole in Poland. Mm. And for two days, we were there. Uh, it was just maybe one of our broadcasts, we can talk about some yeah. of the implications of that because yeah. it was one of those unusual life adventures. It was. And then have all the nations. We had Jew, we had Gentile, we had black, we had white, male, female. It's this thing that the Lord has been tr uh, speaking to us and through us during this time about this this one new being, this one new church. Mm -hmm. And to see it lived out in that particular area, which was a designated hotspot for hellish activity at the highest level. Um, we, we stood, <clears throat> I guess this is where we're going, we stood at a crossroad in the middle of Auschwitz where Adolf Eichmann made the decision as the people were marched towards him to the left, to the crematorium, to the right, to work. And which was worse? Which was worse? Because to live and work and then die after weeks or months in that terrible situation, yeah. that hellhole. See your children destroyed. It, un, unbelievable. But as we left there, we, we took communion. Mm -hmm. there, there was a great redeeming yeah. purpose Absolutely. for us being there. Declarations were made. And as you know, words have power. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just poof, send up a, a nice little prayer and yeah. uh, never again t-shirts or, or whatever it is. It brought me yeah. to, you remember, the night before we went to the camp, yes. we had a prayer meeting in yeah. the basement of the hotel. Yeah. And all of a sudden, um, I don't know what erupted yeah. out of me, but some kind of a... I remember that. A howl, a weeping, a moaning, and it, it wasn't about necessarily 
as I look back, it wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. what had happened there. Mm -hmm. That was probably, you know, the, uh, the hammer on the gun. But there was such a sense in me of gratitude of these yeah. nations, Gentiles from the nations who would care enough to come and bear an intercessory burden yeah. coming thousands and thousands of miles to be there to make declarations out into the atmosphere and to invite the presence of God and say, here I am, Lord. What I've, whatever yeah. you've given to me here, use this. For it you. gave me a glimpse personally, mm -hmm. and I think for those of us that are from the nations, um, a little teeny glimpse into the, the weightiness of what your people historically um, not only have gone through, but the weight they carry in representing Yahweh uh, in a way that led to not just persecution, but horrific resistance from the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I, when I saw you breaking down, it wasn't a breaking down in a, in a strange way. It was, it was, that's what I sensed is like how many years have gone by with a burden and to see a part of that come together. Jesus' mission, when you look at his prayer in John 17, that we may all be one as he and the Father were one. It, and, and it includes the nations. It includes the Jew, the Gentile. It's just a beautiful picture. And I feel like in this season, you know, with Pastor Stovall, it, it is about demonstrations. Mm -hmm. like, like I felt if neutrality now for me anyway. It's like I am a, an old sports guy. So... You know, the neutral zone, neutrality is, is choosing death right now and, and choosing to side with the enemy. You know, we got to stand for something. And the church is supposed to be this force in the earth made up of Jew, Gentile, made up of all the different mosaic that we read about in Scripture that is supposed to reveal this manifold wisdom of, of God, who he is, not just to the earth, but to the powers and the rulers and I just got that sense when we were there. It was a, it was drawing a line in the sand and going, your time is short mm -hmm. and our God is awesome and mm -hmm. he is good. And when we mm -hmm. took communion uh, on that ground that had been probably designated, dedicated to the enemy, um, to be a part of that was with life blood. with blood. It was an altar yeah. to hell. Yes, exactly. And to come with the elements, what represented the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus, and for all of us to participate mm -hmm. was just, it was life transforming for me. It's forever embedded in who I am. Mm -hmm. And during that trip, it released something in me about my, my I, I am indebted to the God of Israel. And we'll probably get to that in another We'll tease another he episode. He is your God. He is my God. It, it's it's what Ruth, you know, she came back from with uh, uh, Naomi. Mm -hmm. and, and and when they went back to Bethlehem, the house of bread and her declaration that he, your God is my God. You know, you, she said, your people is my people. And I think this is a beautiful thing that God's doing right now. So mm -hmm. I know we'll get to this in other episodes, but we it's might, just something beautiful. There's a, there's an artery right here that I, I don't even want to get off it because yeah. we have just a couple more minutes uh, before we have to say goodbye on, on this chapter. But for me, Brian, there was something so deep because I saw uh, the heart of the church mm -hmm. that was there before me opening up and, and scooting a chair hmm. up to the table for the Jew. Yeah. With love, mm -hmm. understanding, appreciation. Yeah. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about this firstborn. Remember, mm, yeah. um, we just came through Passover, right? A, a week or 10 to however long ago <laughs> that was. One of the things that God said to Moses, I'm sending you back to Egypt mm -hmm. poof, because I want my firstborn son to know my name. That's powerful. And... And I see, 
I see a church worldwide that is beginning to reconnect mm -hmm. with his name. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know why it's bothered me my entire believing life when, when we pray, God this, God that, God this. The Muslims pray, God, God, God. The Hindus pray, yeah. God, God, God. And there's millions of them. He has a name. And he wants us to know yeah. his name. Now, for Western Christians, it's weird. It's a it's a yeah. weird thing. Tell me that it's not. No, it, it, to it, hear it, Yahweh. It, it is. Like, uh, uh, for me, and you'll have to forgive me, it's like, it's kind of like when you compartmentalize things like we tend, tend to do. It's like, that's a Jewish thing. Exactly. That's a Jewish thing. And what I'm seeing in my own walk with the Lord is having not been brought up early in my walk with a sense of who this God really is historically, not just, I experienced savior God. Right. Right. But, but when I, now that I'm looking back and I'm seeing a, a supreme being who Trump, he's not a first amongst equals. He is the one, he is it. He is the creator of the universe. It's it started to. I keep saying it's like I feel like I've got new neural pathways in my brain. Yep. That that when every time I pray now and lift up His name or say, "Hey, I feel like the Lord is showing." When I when I used to say that, it wasn't near what it means now. Mm -hmm. When I say that, I feel like the Lord is showing me this. It has a different tone and tenor, mm -hmm. and it's that reverential mm -hmm. fear and understanding, and then to know it's connected with. A people like he is the God of Israel mm -hmm. and I got he graciously extended the invitation as somebody from the nations yep. to be a part the younger brother you know I'm the youngest in my family I'm telling you the younger brother always has this spoiled nature <laughs> I wouldn't know what that is because <laughs> I was the oldest with the but, but you see what I'm saying but like the younger brother has this <laughs> This sense of invincibility, this sense of entitlement, oh, yeah. this sense of, and you look all throughout scripture, these different examples of the younger brothers, mm -hmm. um, but there's the, this, this, not just a place at the table, the older brother carries something that the younger brother needs. And I think that is what is difficult for most younger brothers, mm -hmm. is that the older brother holds a key to history, holds a key to our heritage, holds the a key. Birthright. That's what I'm saying. It's so birthright. It's the yes. And so that's what's been just amazing is simultaneously the awe and reverence of who he is, but also a respect for those that carried and protected that name all these centuries and protected the scriptures that led to my salvation. Like, where did the scriptures come from? Who, who guarded that? Who, who carried that forward? We don't even think about that in, in the West. Most altar calls are about me getting out of my mess, daddy God saving us, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. but, but to divorce ourselves from that historic side, yep. we're kind of, we're setting people up for, for a misconception about who he really is because who he really is is the most important thing that people can see about us, who we say he is. Yeah. There's a there's been such a disconnect for so many that you could say century and even millennia when you talk about uh, a church that that start, was birthed in Jerusalem, if you will, at Pentecost, as we approach now the, the feast of Shavuot, the feast of weeks, Pentecost. Um and then went out from there as Jesus commanded from Jerusalem to yes. Judea and Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. There, there rose up very early, mm -hmm. even in the, the mid-50s, we see it in the book of Romans, Paul, as warning the Roman church, be careful. They're already pushing out their Jewish brothers and sisters mm -hmm. because Jerusalem and Rome were at war. Mm -hmm. And they had enough trouble already. There were a lot of different reasons. Um, but there was such a disconnect of seeing, hey, we, we are one family. And we have, I think, car compartmentalized is a great term. You've used it a couple of times. We're going to get to more of this. I need to 
wrap it up again today. And it, is this Motivation Monday? This is Motivation Monday. Come on. And it's the rabbi and the runt till we come up with <laughs> That's right, the rabbi better. and the runt. As long as you came up with that, I'm okay with that, except call no man rabbi. So you have to be both. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> um, wow. I don't know about you, friends, but rich. And it's just going to get richer and richer as we go along. We're, we've got a schedule. So do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Go to uh, the app store and download our new app, Wilbur Ministries. There's going to be our schedule there for these broadcasts. We're going to be podcasting, live streaming. We've got Motivational Monday. We've got Worship Wednesday. We've got Shabbat Fridays. Nice. And uh, there's a schedule that you can count on. So you can sit at your table and celebrate Shabbat with us um, every Friday. And so there's all of these and so much more. Do yourself a favor, download the app, and go ahead and download the Celebration Church app as well. Lots of stuff there books and articles and teaching and services and we are uh, we're a family so uh, go ahead and do yourself a favor and do that it'll keep you busier than a one-armed paper hanger if there is such a thing i would wouldn't want to try that all right one last thing this has just released this is an atmosphere shifter we took some of our favorite songs of the past um, hired some of Nashville's best Christian uh, players, and um, this is an instrumental project. Now, I do introduce a couple of the songs with scripture from where the songs were pulled, but uh, I've heard some little snippets of this, and I don't want to turn it off. We're already getting great testimonies. It's called Selah. By now, you should be able to get it as a digital download. Uh, again, Wilbur Ministries, it's on our app. You can go to iTunes and and uh, whatever. So this is available to you. Take advantage of it. Fill your home mm -hmm. with the sounds of heaven. It doesn't necessarily have to be Wilbur Ministries, yeah. although uh, in, there's so much good stuff. If you're feeling like, you know, Brian, you heard our, our last broadcast, Pounding on the Door, his pregnant wife crying in the bathroom. and Just a uh, great moment. <laughs> one of the great moments in his life. How do you, It's an atmosphere. Yes. People do what they hear, huh? It's so fill, fill your space. You can turn any space yeah. into a sanctuary. It's good. We are living stones. We're built to contain yeah. his presence. So go ahead and get that. And until we see you next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you his shalom. From Paul and Brian, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again very soon.